The Daily Guide this morning says, ex-NCA board members judgment what happened today, to be pronounced on them today. Muhammad Dodges Mills' death, Abronya is firing uh, his uh, mouth widely open on the front page of the Daily Guide. We'll compile new register, EC assures, judge sorry for Nana comment, and Auditor General contempt ruling today. The back page says the MPC saved a life support federations and also no lessons learned from May 9th. It comes with a photo of Jacob Netty, one of the victims. Ghanaian Times, public social gathering defiance will deal with lawbreakers. President says so. COVID-19 impact on businesses, jobs, invest 18 billion Ghana cities to revamp economy. TU to, TUC to government. Already governors uh, allocated some 600 million. TUC says we want more. Ghana's confirmed cases, 19, uh, 4,700, 494 recover, 22 have died. And judiciary must protect rights of citizens. Justice Tanko Amadou yesterday at the vetting of the Supreme Court judge nominees. Flood cuts off Gakokpe community and Na Namemboke, Namemboku, I beg your pardon, Namemboku community in dire need of water, disregard uh, for social distancing as well. The daily graphic. Vetting of Supreme Court nominees. Committee refers Honyega to plenary, approves Amadou. Faith-based organizations lord government for extending ban on public gatherings. And the mayor surprises mothers in Accra. Uh, usually they would have had a, a very big uh, festival for them at the Oak Plaza, but that didn't happen. Senior, senior Landing Beach project is taking shape. That's what we read on the back page. On the front page of the BNF team, we also read that with no source of growth and no cure in sight, insurance recapitalization remains in limbo, and I keep asking why the insurance companies have not spoken up yet on how they are cushioning their clients. More businesses adopt salary cuts, layoff to survive, and Ghana's tax measures in response to COVID-19. You can always join us with your thoughts and comments on 020-21666-33. That's 020-21666-33. My guest this morning is the Honorable Member of Parliament for the Tamale South constituency, Tamale North constituency, I beg your pardon, the Honorable Al Hassan Suhini. And also joining me uh, for the second time is the Honorable Deputy Minister for Information, Pius and Amhajide. Gentlemen, good morning and many thanks for your time. Good morning, yeah, Johnny. Thank you very much for inviting us. So, you know, how are you? Oh, Alhamdulillah, I'm terrific. Great. I hope you are well too. I'm alive, I can't complain. No. We give God the glory. Pius, how are you, my brother? I'm, I'm excellent, my brother. Right. Uh, we continue to be grateful for the uh, message of the Lord. We're fine. Okay, so we will move on and uh, let's look at the vetting of the Supreme Court judges. So in yesterday you were in Parliament. The conversation that has gone on on social media now is that um, Justice Honyega was, was, is likely to be rejected, was rejected. I don't know what the position is, but it doesn't appear that people are satisfied with his, uh, what do you call it, um, his conduct earlier, reading a certain speech in his capacity as a traditional ruler. And that question came up. Care to share some light on, on that one? Well, um, Johnny, let me say good morning to uh, Pius. Good morning to uh, our viewers, especially the very good people of the Tamale North constituency. Um, yes, yesterday um, we had the opportunity as members of the appointments committee mm. to vet two uh, nominees for the Supreme Court uh, in the persons of uh, Justice Imoru Tanko mm -hmm. and Justice um, Clements uh, Hanoniga. Mm -hmm. It was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. The issue with um, Justice Clements Hanoniga was not much with what he said or okay. what he read. Okay. What was the issue? But with how he answered some of the questions that were put to him. Mm. Um, if you look at uh, the Constitution, I can't, I can't immediately recall mm -hmm. the particular provision. There is a very high standard that mm -hmm. is set for uh, a member of the bench mm. to qualify 
for nomination and appointment as a Supreme Court judge. Mm -hmm. Among the standards that is highlighted is integrity, right. moral integrity, mm -hmm. and high you know, moral character, high moral integrity, character and proven integrity. I think that's, that's how it is couched. So it is not for me, and I'm sure I can say same for colleagues, mm. it's not much you know, about what he read, mm -hmm. but it is how he responded to questions relating to that and others when he appeared for mm. some of us. Mm. <clears throat> and obviously, many of us, and if we are going to be sincere, mm -hmm. on the panel, not just the minority side, we're not impressed mm. with so many things. Many of us, mm. because we speak among ourselves whilst we sit there, and when the nominee is discharged, we speak among ourselves. Mm. So generally speaking, it was not just the minority that wasn't impressed. Mm. Many across board, you know, right. were not that impressed with mm. some of the, uh, the posturing, answers. the okay. answers mm. that were given. So um, to be fair, and maybe to also respond to some of the issues that I have seen in the media, mm. as a minority, mm -hmm. We requested that decision on, you know, um, him, mm -hmm. or if it was uh, pleasing to the majority, both of them, be deferred for at least a day, mm. so that we could reflect on some of the feelings mm. and some of the, you know, things that we taught. Mm you know, needed attention. But he apologized for reading that statement or letter that sought to extol the president in his capacity as a traditional uh, ruler and also as a sitting judge. To some extent he did. <clears throat> I mean, and those were some of the reasons why we called for a day to reflect. Because listen to the way the apology was couched mm. and tell me if it sounded sincere. I mean, you will want to reflect on it and say whether he deserves a pardon, whether he deserves a second chance to prove himself. Because remember, that you know, <coughs> statement mm -hmm. infringed upon the code of ethics of the judiciary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Code 61B frowns upon you know, a judge mm -hmm. endorsing any political person. And let's, and let's not quibble over this. Mm. The statement was an endorsement. First, it was a judgment on Nana Kufado's governance when he said, or when he read, mm. that the, 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 they are happy with the excellent way he is governing. That's a judgment. But and he, that, he was speaking as chief on behalf of wait his a minute, people. Wait a minute, that's what I'm saying. He said, we, they are happy with the excellent way he is governing. Mm. That's a judgment. And that they hope that he will be given a second term. But if That's an expression of a desire. But if That's you, an endorsement. If, if you are a chief and your people ask you to speak on their behalf, what do you do? Fantastic. If you are a chief and your people ask you to speak on their behalf, mm. but you are also a judge, and according to your code of ethics... Mm. You are not to say the things your people want you to say. To say. Mm. You are faced with an ethical dilemma. Mm. And so if you choose to break the code of the judiciary, mm. so to please your people, you must be ready to face the consequences of that breach. I hope you get me. You must be ready. It is an ethical dilemma you are faced with. Mm. Your people have asked you to do something you feel obliged to do as their chief. But also as a judge, your code of ethics does not allow you to do what your people are requesting you to do. So if you make a choice to honor the request of your people, you must be ready to pay the price for breaching your code of ethics as a judge. That is fundamental. So when it was put to him, even you know, uh, 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 by the minority chief whip. Mm. Honorable Muntaka. Yes, mm. that there is doubt about the claim mm. 
that this was just a speech that was given to him to read. Mm. He was not convincing. The question was, who wrote that speech? He said he was going too far. He should let it go. And then later came back to say he didn't know. Who handed you that speech? He didn't know. Are we not pushing this too far? He claimed he didn't know. Are we not pushing this too far? Are we a breach of the judicial code of ethics is pushing things too far? Why then did we put it in our code of ethics if it is not important? So, and then that's what I'm saying. Then the answers didn't elicit the kind of perhaps remorse mm. that will make you feel that, okay, this is a man who is aware of the mistake he made and may not make it. Okay. And but, remember, but, but, he's but, going bottom to the, line is what? Remember, he's going to the Supreme Court. Right. Where, again, justices are encouraged to, dis, to dissent mm. when they don't agree with their colleagues. Mm. But this is a man who, in answer to a question, said he doesn't have a problem reading a position of a group that he belongs to, even though he disagrees with that position. Bottom line is? He is a yes man. How do you he mean? He came across as a yes man. Because you don't agree mm. that this statement that this group is giving me mm. to read is correct. But, that, but, that, but I, that, I should but read it anyway. But that single statement alone that he read cannot whittle away all his... Um, you know, achievement and experience and expertise as a lawyer, circuit court, magistrate, high court I agree. judge, I agree. appeal court judge. It cannot wash away everything. I agree. And that is why, as members of the minority, we thought it was too soon to take a decision. Mm. We requested our colleagues to allow us at least a night okay. to reflect on it, put all the things you have raised into context, mm. and then we could take a decision today. But somehow, our colleagues seem to be in a fighting mood. How do you mean? <laughs> yesterday, who, so who, who is they, fighting who? They, 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 the position was that you can go to hell. We are voting for him anyway, and so they took their vote. Okay, you know. But we decided that we will want to. Uh, you know, uh, uh, refer him to the plenary okay. uh, for, for all of us to take the decision on him. All right, Pius, take, take a bite on this one. They, they, you've heard Suhini narrate what, what happened. He find, the minority finds the answers unsatisfactory. They think that he's a yes man and it doesn't inure to the benefit of the very essence of the high office of a Supreme Court judge and that somebody of that nature needs to be looked at again if we need to give him that power because the law would be resting in its bosom and we need to be very careful about it. Do you share in the sentiments? Well, thank you very much. Good morning to you, my colleague and our cherished viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, my brother, Honorable Suhini, has an advantage because he sat through uh, the mm -hmm. proceedings of the vetting committee, mm -hmm. so he has first-hand knowledge. I took time off to watch uh, later on uh, on the internet. Mm -hmm. And from the very word go, I want to state that uh, vetting of a nominee to the High Office of Justice of the Supreme Court is serious business. Right. And I would expect that our members of parliament will ask all the difficult and relevant questions and all the probing questions that's, that they deserve uh, to ask. Mm. And they are deserving, in the name of the people of Ghana, to honest. Uh, and faithful and conscientious answers. Mm -hmm. And so I have heard commentary that uh, some of the attitude of some of the members of the committee may appear high-handed and they may have been out to get their pound of flesh. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at the exercise rather in the frames of partisan politics in the sense that a nominee was reported to have endorsed a candidate of another, and I'm saying mm. endorsed, mm. Uh, a candidate of another party uh, who is the president of Ghana. But I hold the view that uh, even though there may be 
some justification for anybody to make that claim. Mm. I disagree. Uh, Why do you that, disagree? That uh, they may have been high-handed in their approach. Mm. I think that it is their duty to ask those difficult and relevant questions. And so I don't begrudge anybody. Do I find some of their questions uh, uh, quite unnecessary? Yes, mm. as the entire process. I feel that sometimes our vettings can actually degenerate and mm. uh, people will ask some of the questions that I believe that the vast majority of the people of Ghana would not be interested Did in. this one degenerate? Oh, several. And the chairman had to overrule uh, several of those questions. And, and I think that even as we encourage our uh, vetting committee to continue to forge ahead and ask those uh, probing, sometimes difficult questions, I think that we may begin to have to focus on those real questions that matter to the people of Ghana. Mm. Having said that, I am also of the view that, yes, I agree that a nominee to the high office of justice of the Supreme Court must have uh, high moral character and proven Probably integrity. integrity. There's no doubt about <clears throat> that. And I think that we should frame these discussions. And I can understand the challenge that the nominee faces. Why? Because this is a nominee in one breath. Mm -hmm. It's called Ashri Nyagashi. What's that? He's the paramount chief of the Nyagbo traditional area okay. of the region where I come from. Right. Okay. And the same person is referred to as Clemens Honyanuga. Okay. The other honorable uh, justice nominee who Amadi, was vetted, uh, honorable Tanko, mm. he doesn't carry this dilemma. Okay. So in honestly and truthfully appreciating the kind of situation <laughs> that uh, the nominee faces, we must also avert our minds to our traditional construct. Are you saying his hands were tied? Not necessarily. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to build a point so that... Mm. And I'm saying that the difficult questions can be fine. Mm. But I am asking myself, is there not wisdom in why... And I've been trying to even make contact with persons who understand our tradition and, and so on and so forth. Why is it that when somebody is even made a chief, a title and a name is imposed, mm. an identity is changed? Mm. What did you find? And the sense I get is that when you're a chief, you act as a chief. Okay. So I ask myself, so in acting as a chief, and if you want to make a value judgment of the integrity of somebody as a judge, mm. would you necessarily have to maybe go into his practices as a chief? Would that also not be a certain amount of, if you may, uh, disadvantaging the person in a certain in a certain in a certain light. It's a question of conflict of interest. That's it's not too much about conflict of interest. Mm. This is somebody who is a traditional ruler, mm. who his people have mandated to say something for. And I'll come to whether what was said was a, uh, was an endorsement and all that. Mm. But I'm appreciating it generally now at the policy level. Shouldn't we be minded that? He was speaking not necessarily as Clemens Wanyanugan, who was before as yesterday, mm. and that he was speaking as Ashu Nyagashi, the paramount chief of the Nyabo traditional area, who had a duty to his people to communicate a certain message that the people wanted him to should, communicate. Should he not have taken into cognizance his role, uh, a bigger role, if you will, as a, a judge of court of our land. Well, that's, that's exactly one of the challenges that I have about a bigger role mm. or a smaller role. I get the sense that somebody may think that, okay, the, ju the role of the justice of the Supreme Court is a bigger role. Right. But I'm not too sure that we want to just oppose the traditional setting with our uh, legal setting and claim that uh, the role of the, the paramount chief mm. collapses before the role of the justice of the Supreme But if Court. you look at the sources of our laws, I mean, it works all the way up. Common law, you know, traditional laws, it works all the way up. Very Absolutely. The so even the, even the common and, law... And even it is the Supreme Court that gives interpretation to the Constitution. I, 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 I agree. I'm saying that even the common law, even the Constitution, recognizes the institution of chieftaincy. Mm. So I don't want to play small and big in okay. this case. I'm only saying that I see there's a challenge mm -hmm. for the candidate. Honestly, 
I believe that if Clemens uh, 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 Onyenuga was speaking as Clemens Onyenuga, some of the things he may have said, he would not have said. In fact, he may not even have gotten nominated to have been the one to read that speech. He would not have, if he was speaking as an individual, Clemens Onyenuga, the judge or the lawyer. I'm not sure that on, that, on the strength of his uh, uh, law practice or be, he's been a judge. Mm -hmm. He was even qualified. He, he could even have been qualified to have been nominated. But, but, so, where, but where, so I just want us to appreciate okay, the challenge that, that he faces. Answers. But but the, but where also I mean a ranking member puts question to him as to whether or not he read the statement before he read it out there publicly, and whether he saw that as an endorsement and all. And what really calls the unsatisfactory answers that he gave to them because I watched yesterday, and it it, it did appear that. He did not see the statement. Either he did not see it before or he saw it. And I don't know. But his answers were simply not satisfactory to the committee. Well, I did, no, to a certain part of the committee. And he said they voted. Trust and me. so, so, Trust so, me. so, 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 they, they voted and that. they voted and the, 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 the results are there. So, and satisfactory or not is a subjective matter. Mm -hmm. And I don't begrudge somebody who is not, who, some of the questions to me were not satisfactory. But that's my subjective view. Mm -hmm. I may be wrong. And so, Somebody can assume something like that. But having established the dilemma the candidate faced and having invited our colleagues to appreciate that we are a people of tradition, mm -hmm. we can move on. The second uh, angle of my argument will be the injunction on even our chiefs okay. to refrain from uh, what somebody may look, as, may look at as partisan politics. Mm which sometimes some of these so-called endorsements mm. uh, appear uh, to be. I think that we must have an honest conversation around that. And let's not pick and choose. Mm. Because we have been in this country and have seen chiefs do these things. But, but it, I mean, okay? that, does, that, doesn't have, make, that doesn't no, make... I, I'm no, not, I'm not justifying it. Mm. I'm saying that we must have an honest conversation about, about it. it. Okay? We must also have an honest conversation about the relationship that must exist between the state, government, and chiefs, mm. and see if the state uh, inadvertently, willingly or not, does not put chiefs in a certain position when, for instance, the state can buy vehicles and distribute uh, uh, to, to, to chiefs and so on. And you, re mm. you, you remember the, the past experience of uh, land cruisers and mm. Prados. I that, say you have uh, not bought a land no, cruiser I'm, for I'm, a chief I'm, now. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just saying that. Let's no, you said past experience. Well, Governments have been buying chiefs. Could, could be in this, in this government, the previous government. Yeah, because this government has bought land cruisers for chiefs. You want me to give you the names? So uh, you are, okay. are, are agreeing with me? Allow me <laughs> yeah, go ahead, but don't so, say past <laughs> experience of government. Because gov all governments buy land cruisers for chiefs. But I didn't say past governments. I said past experience. For, 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 <laughs> what, not for, what, experience? Exactly, for what exactly? Both of you don't tell us why you buy the land cruisers for the chiefs. And they said, let them tell you why they made it. They made it such a big deal. Mm. Oh, when it is, it is, it is, it's, it's a big deal. I'm saying to you right so now, why my you view is a big. It's so a, why it's you, a big why but nobody tells doing? us why we buy the. Well, but I'm saying to you that that's why your government. That's what I'm saying to you that. I mean, you know, I don't know, but so, <laughs> so, so we can get. There. I'm saying that let's have that honest conversation. Okay. And for me, these are not the matters that we need to be partisan don't, about. Don't we also think, Pius, that for example, I mean, and in celebrating O two four on his seventieth. I got the clear indication from a documentary I watched that in all the elections since he's been on the throne, and I'm sure predates to that, other paramount chiefs and kings as well, have had a stake in our elections in terms of ensuring that the nation doesn't break apart when we come to that very brink. Now, imagine if, for example, Otufo shows his, and all apologies to the Mensha Palace, shows his open political color or decides that he is with this political party, or reads a statement that seeks to suggest and endorse, and we have a, a certain election dispute, would we feel comfortable going to him to say, Nana, Yaba, settle this for us? That's exactly the point I'm making, mm. that we should have an honest conversation over this uh, historical uh, practice mm. of chiefs uh, making comments either in appreciation of earlier gestures, because if you're a government and I'm a chief sitting in my palace somewhere mm. uh, or in, on my stool somewhere or my skin somewhere, you come and give me a lamp cruiser. 
Two months later, you come and I declare that my people are, and I are going to vote for you. It could have been procured, right. okay? It could have been solicited endorsements and all of those. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying that we can have an honest discussion about this. But these things have happened over time. Okay. And I'm surprised that there are people on the vetting committee yesterday who have lived through all their experience and have never had, have never found their voices on these practices. Okay. And so that's number two. Number three Finally, is that. Uh, your, number three is that. Mm. They claim that the candidate nominee or the nominee for the uh, endorsed a candidate. Mm. I am not aware that even as we speak, Nana Kufaru is candidate. Until recently, he feel, until recently he had not even filed his nomination. So technically speaking, what is it that the man is supposed to? Who is which candidate is it that the man is supposed to have allegedly endorsed? And I find, honestly. I find nothing wrong. Who was present at that function? President Nana Kufadu. And what was President uh, there for? He, he was there on a state visit. He, he was inspecting progress of work, and he, there was a deba held in his honor. Okay. Okay, and I was at that deba. In fact, I had the privilege of introducing uh, the revered chief mm. uh, as the representative of the, the, the entire uh, Afajatu South District to make a few comments. Welcome address. Okay. And the accusation is that the man endorsed a, 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 a candidate. Mm. But we didn't even have a candidate to have been endorsed. So I'm at a loss as to what exactly is being spoken of. Number two, mm. this is a chief who has witnessed development in his area. So a chief who has witnessed development in his area can no longer comment that development is happening and, I, that, and, and that I see it and says that the people of Ghana, he prays, the, 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 uh, the traditional area, the district, they pray that the people of Ghana may give you a second term. Did they, what, what did that, he say may? Yes, it's, there, it's in the speech. Okay. That the people of Ghana may give you a second, a second term. Mm. As to whether the man was even going to, at that time, seek a second term or not, we, 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 was, not was unknown. Okay? Mm. So I find this to be... The people, the, the Ghanaian attitude, the people who had seen development at their doorsteps, who wanted to speak to mm. the president and show appreciation, and maybe possibly ask for some more development. Okay. But who all of whom could not speak, Thank but, you. but had to use their chief. Mm. Now, because the, the, the president is, the, is supposedly going to be the candidate of another political party, mm. our colleagues on the ticket of the NDC want to go for the Jaguar as... Uh, 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 revenge. They uh, say history uh, is a good guide, is it not? Well, but we should be careful what uh, precedents we set. Okay. Whilst we look at these things uh, honestly and seriously and critically, okay. we, we must also bear in mind some of the political. Okay, we need to switch the topic. Yes, I'll yes, give you yes. one minute. If I give you one minute, it means I'll give you one minute. I, I, I okay. don't mind. You, you see, I, I think that uh, there's a need to correct a certain impression. Mm. It is not as if we are worried that he endorses a candidate or a political person that does not belong to our tradition. Okay. Well, but so we are worried that he breached the judicial code of ethics. Right. Let's separate the two. Even if he had endorsed a political person mm. that is on our side, that mm. is the NDC, it would have still not negated the position that we are taking. Mm. He mm. breached a judicial code of ethics. Again, it is not as if it is standard practice for chiefs to praise government or political people. It's not a standard practice. No. It is the choice. But we have seen it. It is the choice mm. that some chiefs make. Other chiefs have also criticized, you know, political people. Mm. So it is a choice. No one has set that standard. Let nobody confuse you. That it is the standard that when the government person or the president or a political person comes, then the chief is obliged mm. to praise. No, we have heard some other chiefs that have criticized government people. So it is a personal <coughs> choice. And so if one chooses to do what he did, mm. he must be ready to face the consequences, especially when it contradicts the code of ethics in the but, other but, profession but, that But the chiefs have works. a council of elders who advise him. Now, that's, that brings me to my next point. Mm. You see, it is not as if he didn't have a choice. First of all, this event was not happening in his traditional area. It was at the district level. Mm. 
where right. other paramount chiefs were present. Right. In fact, the host paramount chief, mm -hmm. we are told, was not nominated to read the speech because he's unwell. Told by who? The, 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 the nominee okay. made that point when okay. he appeared before right. us, that he's unwell. But that tells you mm -hmm. that <coughs> any of the paramount chiefs present could have read that speech. Right, and the axe fell on him. That's why I'm saying, minded by his code of ethics, he could have declined. Mm. And another chief could have been made to read it. Maybe in but a, he made a choice to go ahead. Maybe the hierarchy of... No, uh, it wasn't about hierarchy. We, okay. It was all put on the... It wasn't about hierarchy. Mm. So he could have... He could have declined. Okay. But he didn't. Mm. And you see, a man's... In my view, a man's moral, high moral integrity is tested at two points. Which, which are? The first point is when you are faced with a dilemma mm -hmm. to do what is right or wrong. And then you choose, and then, and then you make a choice. That's when it is first tested. Mm. If you choose wrong, your high moral integrity is questioned. Mm. If you choose right, it is upheld. At that point, it is tested. Mm. And the second point where it is tested is when you are confronted with the consequences of your choice. Okay. So you can choose wrong. But when you are confronted with the consequences of your choice, you can come clean Thank and you. be honest. Your, your point is wrong. And made. then you can be assessed okay. on that basis. Your point is and wrong. for me, on both fronts, he failed. Yeah. He made the wrong call. And when he appeared before us, he was evasive. Okay. Thank you very much. Paris. Well, I think that... Uh, uh, First of all, uh, confirm for me what Sweeney says. Was it at the district level? Yes, yes. Um, it was was, district was level. he the only one who could have spoken or were there other people who could have spoken? And did the axe fell or fall on him in terms of hierarchical order? It, it was at the district level, no okay. doubt. There were several paramount chiefs. Yes, indeed. We were also informed that the host paramount chief was unwell. Mm. But we also were informed that he is the senior most or the longest serving paramount chief in the whole of the district, if not in the whole of the Volta region. Okay. Very senior. He's been there. And just like in parliament, just like in the, the judiciary, on the mm. bench itself, mm. in chiefdom, uh, uh, seniority is critical. Mm. And you would see that most uh, younger chiefs would defer to older chiefs. So it doesn't come to me as a surprise. What happened that, to that, 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 But I'm it. saying that they would defer, if they would Even defer to him, chosen. okay? Mm. In, in chiefdom, could have my understanding and my knowledge is that uh, seniority by age mm. is critical. And that and is even why delegation in, to and, and, allowed. And, and, you can delegate that duty allow, as allow, a senior. Allow, allow. So, so he was chosen to perform a duty. Could his linguist have but I'm saying that No, he could, uh, couldn't. The linguist could not. It would have been... It would have been the you see, chief No, but I, that's exactly the point. The people wanted to communicate at a certain level. Okay. And who the bearer of the message is sometimes is as important as the message. Mm. And so they went for the longest serving paramount chief, a respected member of the bar. Mm. And for me, if we want to look at somebody's high moral character and his proven integrity, mm. how about his long years, and he went through it, how about his long years on the bench? That should count for something. If you jump after having given him a clean bill of health, from where I stand, giving him a clean bill of health mm. on, the, on, on his job, as a lawyer, as a member of the bench, as a judge, he has a clean bill of health. You set that aside and you go into the area of his practice as a traditional chief, mm. several years, mm. and you find one, one, one uh, event that you may find mm. uh, uh, problematic. I feel that you can look upon that. Could he have been on the again. blind side and, and that nobody, nobody may have known? I mean, if he has been there no, for a long time. he was time, asked to do he this. He served presidents. Could he have said this to another president? He could have, in my view. I'm, and I've said that the Honorable, Honorable Suhini made the point here that mm. they, they are choice and chiefs choose to criticize. Okay? So if chiefs can choose to criticize, mm. I believe that not the, cho the, 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 the choice of the chiefs, if the people that the chief superintends, the, the people that the mm. chief is ruling over, if they are uncomfortable with something and they mm. tell the chief and the chief says that and it is interpreted to mean criticism, mm. then if the people are happy about something and the chief says it, that one is a problem. But when the mm. chiefs criticize, oh, that is fine. But when the chief raises, then that one is a problem. Okay. I think that we are not, we are not being... Okay. And, Thank and you. Lastly, what does the code Leslie, of ethics say? The, the point about breaking a code 
of ethics. Mm. They are saying that what does the code say? I mm. want somebody to educate us on what the code says. The code speaks about endorsing a party or a candidate. Mm. My honest submission to you, Johnny, this morning is that having listened to the tape, okay. having read the transcript, mm. I do not see an endorsement of a party mm. or a candidate. I have seen a chief extolling developments that he has seen in his backyard. Thank you. Uh, so a message here says, in 2016, the Dorma also a high court judge, Osajifu Ajiman Bedu, endorsed ex-president Mahama, and the NDC didn't have an issue with that. Then, uh, why do they want to hang, hang Justice Honyunaga, uh, Honyenuga, I beg your pardon, if they didn't find anything wrong with what the Dorma Hine said at the time? Uh, even it's true, it happened. And, and I didn't even want to get into those. Because he has not before the, super, the, see, the voting committee. Allow, allow, allow. I, I'm saying, if what he is claiming is true, mm -hmm. Maybe he hasn't had our position because that man has not been nominated to come before the vetting committee okay. Okay. for Supreme Court. Mm. Okay. For the records, Jolene, for the records, this did happen, mm. but the voice of the NDC against Honyanuga mm. did not start at the vetting committee. They started talking the day the, the revered judge and chief made a comment. They could have done the same for other chiefs, but okay. they chose not to. Okay. Uh, well, you be the judges uh, from home watching at 02021 66633. We'll share your thoughts and comments shortly with the rest of our viewers. Uh, well, page three of the Daily Guide says we'll compile new register. The Electoral Commission yesterday assured Ghanaians that arrangements are advanced for the compilation of a new voters' register. The register would be uh, hinged upon a new voters' management system for the upcoming. 2020 presidential elections and parliamentary elections, information which comes on the heels of the heightened agenda by the opposition NDC against the electoral uh, management body. The EC's rebuttal is that the assurance was contained in uh, the minorities uh, whose incessant attacks on the capability of the commission to hold the credible elections in December was in full flight when Harun Idrisu, the minority leader, addressed the media recently. It is most scathing uh, reaction to the to the NDC. The EC made reference to the minority leader's 7th May 2020 press conference, which he sought to attack the integrity and mandate of the Electoral Commission, as well as the creation of an erroneous impression in the minds of the general public on its attitude as far as the COVID-19 pandemic is concerned. And there's also the PPE uh, <laughs> question. You're asking that the Electoral Commission, uh, for example, Dr. Park is asking that the Electoral Commission donated PPEs to frontline health workers because uh, they would not need it and all of that. So, anyway, the easy says, we will go on with our schedule to compile a new register. Why do you have a problem with it? I thought because I began the first one. My good friend, uh, uh, Pius, will start this one. But uh, No, I don't mind. Well, he, he just finished speaking, so I thought... <laughs> Never well, mind. Never if, mind. You, if you I, want to defer to him, why not? I can... Uh, I can, uh, I can no, never mind. Uh, never mind. I, 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 I just... Uh, first of all, will want to urge the Electoral Commission mm. to focus on getting their CI, defective CI, that they have laid before Parliament and withdrawn a couple of times right. What's wrong with it? It is most critical for the elections. What's wrong with it? Well, they laid the CI, they withdrew it. Mm. They laid it again, they withdrew it. Wow. It tells you a certain level of incompetence in my view did they explain why they, the, were, they were withdrawing of course it? because they were defective you know so it is important they focus on what is important and you know get themselves out of this unnecessary uh posturing mm. that has led to a situation where majority of well-meaning Ghanaians mm -hmm. are beginning to see the electoral commissioner especially the new ones that were appointed by Nana Kufuado as, you know, ministers in charge of Nanado's re-election. They should what stop that, that posturing. Is that what you see? I'm saying their posturing is making people feel like they are the ministers in charge of Nanado's re-election. That's a full commission. <laughs> That's Independent. Why, that is why we expect them to behave in a way that they can engender a lot of confidence. This year, what is it supposed to achieve? Look, the, that, is, that is to govern the next elections. Right. We all know that we are not in normal times. Mm -hmm. And for me, I would have wished that at this time, we would be spending our time with the Electoral Commission discussing 
modes of elections, possible mm. modes of elections. Who said the only way to do an election is to gather people in a queue to cast ballots? We know what we are faced with ahead. Mm. Let's begin to discuss the possible modes of elections because our constitution mm. is emphatic about conducting elections on December 7 mm. and doing a handover on January 7. Right. So in the face of what we are you know, currently battling, mm. what are the possible ways mm. through which we can carry out this? Is, is that not what the ECC EC is putting together a schedule to say we're going on, even though they missed the April, the, the, the deadline that they set for themselves to start compilation of a new register. They are still going ahead because they Any well-meaning Ghanaian who has followed the debate will tell you that there is no urgency as we speak really? for us to do a new register. Really? We may need, we may, we may, we may, we may need a new register in the future. Mm. But as we speak, the EC has not convinced any experts. Listen to the Bright Simons and others. Mm. They have not convinced any expert that there is a crucial need for a new register. You see, yet, the, the, the yet, register is faulty. Yet, yet, yes, yet they are intransigent and focus on doing a new register. Mm. To what end? And that again only you know contributes to that perception that they are there to sub to, 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 to support and, 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 and make come true the wishes and dreams of Nana Kufado and his party. That sounds Because fair. they have that been calling, no, them. it's true, they have been calling for a new register consistently for the last four years or so. Because they manage the elections. No, I'm talking about, the, the MPP. I'm talking about, the, you, you may call it coincidence, but I'm saying that there seem to be a, a, a coincidence of thoughts mm. between the new appointees at the Electoral Commission and the president and his party. There seems to be a coincidence of thought. Is it, is it always not the when, case that the government in power not, seems to agree with the Electoral Commission? It's not, it, 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 it's not, it, that is not what is at play here. Mm. What is at play? What is at play here is that you have new Electoral Commissioners who were appointed mm. by the government. And so when you see a coincidence or something that looks like a coincidence of thought, mm. which does not make sense because all the experts say this particular thought does not make sense. Mm. Yet you find a certain intransigence from the Electoral Commission. You can only but wonder what is going on. You don't what see, did the you don't, minority leaders say on the, behalf of the, the minority? You don't see the independence at play? So far, so far, they are not demonstrating uh, that. The, the EC is not happy with the comments that the minority made. And it says that you're doing a lot of propaganda and just trying to make them look bad in the public eye. Desist from doing that, would you? They should, they, should, they should change their actions. And no matter how we try, even if that's what we are doing, we can't make them look bad. It is just how they conduct themselves. Mm. That is making the average Ghanaian mm. begin to wonder if they were not just appointed to ensure a re-election of Nanado and the NPP. They should change their ways. It was published long before even the minority leader said it mm. by the Daily Graphic. That one of their officers came out to say government had given them enough PPEs. And so if they, are, if they did not find it necessary to write a rejoinder, mm. then why should they wait until the minority leader merely repeats what one of its officers was reported to have said by the Daily Graphic mm. before they pick on him? Okay. It all contributes to the perception that these are people we don't like and must oppose at all times. I remember what Boss Manasari said about the NDC some time ago. Mm. These are all the things that feed into the perception that, look, as for these, as for us, we are here 
to do what the MPP and Nanado finds favorable. Okay. The Pius. rest of you can go and steal. Pius, I, I, is your party in bed with the Electoral Commission? And by this, I'm, I'll make reference to something that was said on another network by your party's general secretary, that there can never be an election in this country without a new register. I mean, referring to the 2020 elections, and that the register will happen. The NDC is pointing to the fact that you are in bed, you are doing everything, the EC is doing everything for the re-election of Nanado Danko Kufuado. Is there any truism to that? Uh, Johnny, I am uh, quite sad listening to my brother and member of parliament uh, for the good people of the Tamale North constituency. And I hope and pray that uh, blind partisan considerations don't uh, cloud our better judgment. I know Honorable Suhini and I'm surprised. Uh, let me say that uh, some of the comments made here and even elsewhere, uh, especially by the minority leader, whom I also have a ton of respect for, have been very, very unfortunate. Mm. In fact, reprehensible. To make a statement that this electoral commission is acting as ministers for the re-election of Nana Akufado uh, is unacceptable. Is the AC in uh, bed is, with is, the MPP? It's unacceptable. Is the AC in bed with and the MPP? And I will expect that when senior members of our society make these serious allegations, mm. they offer proof. Is the EC in bed with the MPP? The EC is doing its job. Is the EC in bed with the MPP? I'm saying to you that the Electoral Commission is doing its job. Is a yes or mandated. no question? Please. How can it be in bed with any political party? Okay. We were in this country, the flag bearer of the NDC today, former President Ronis, uh, former President John Dramani Mahama, mm. made the point to all of us that there are systems built inherent in our construct which make it impossible for anybody to want to manipulate the Electoral Commission. You didn't hear these comments? So, Mr. Bahama will speak one thing when he's president and another when he's, pre uh, when he's flag bearer and nobody, and that doesn't speak to his integrity, nobody questions it. It, it appears that so every party saying, in power seems to agree with the Electoral so, so, Commission, but the history. If, but if that is the, if that is the, the tradition and the knowledge uh, that the NDC has, then that's their problem. As far as I know, the Electoral Commission is doing their job. We are mandated as a state, as a government, to provide for the Electoral Commission to do their job. That is where the relationship ends. Okay. They have their independence, they have their autonomy. It is a constitutionally man, a, a independent, it's an injunction actually. Are you surprised that the, the, an official of the Electoral Commission accepts that they received PPEs from government? I will come to that. The Electoral then, Commission has then, issued a statement. And then later comes back to say they never got the PPEs. I will come to that. The Electoral Commission has issued a statement mm. and called out the, both the minority leader and the minority and the NDC. That is not true. It's a lie. Did you know if PPEs were given to the No. I, I, I didn't know. And the Electoral Commission has spoken. They said they have not received any PPEs. So the daily graphic lied to them. That's well, you are the, I'm just hearing it for the first time. Even when they read their statement, they never made any claims about daily graphic. I mean, it's news. Because I've never heard it. I can share it with I you. Never it's here. It's here. I, I the never heard it. Commission has received enough personal protective equipment. Well, from 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 that's graphic GH. Yeah, okay. That's graphic GH is not telegraphic. That's graphic. Listen, Dr. Sribo, Dr. Sribo, Dr. Sribo, Dr. Sribo, Dr. Sribo but you see, Kwaku. Hold on, hold on. This is Let, attributed can I, can to Dr. Can I have, can I have a look at this piece? I'm saying to you that, Johnny. And it was on news file. Johnny. It what, was on what, news file. You can check it. It was even on news The website of Daily Graphic. Is daily graphic is graphic.com, not okay. graphic gh.com. Wow. There is a fake website. So I'm telling there. you, it was on so news. Please, file. Uh, that's about whether he I, spoke I, I, on I, I, news. Allow me time. Allow he me spoke time. on oh. news. I, 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 where he said time. that government had given them enough. Which, that is not even true. Okay. okay, just like he did with graphic. Oh, I'm okay. saying to you that if he took time to check, it's not true. Oh, okay. And I would have thought that a credible minority would cross-check. If they had cross-checked, they would have found out that this website they thought was graphic mm. was not even graphic. Graphic GH is not graphic. On, uh, it's not the website of the Daily Graphic. Mm -hmm. And so you have just exposed yourself. And that's why I'm saying that it is reprehensible that a minority will fall for fake news mm. based on which they indict the Electoral Commission mm. and call it names. 
So these are not persons that we must take serious. Now they are talking about coincidence he, of he's thought. He's talking about the, the man appearing on another network to say... I just said to you that... Hey, you, are, you, are being, you are being pulled around. No, no, no. no, 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 no don't allow yourself to... Yeah. News file. No, 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 don't allow... 18th April. Pius, 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 you are here. Pius, you are here. He says something, and it is your job to say it is correct or not. That's don't what I'm allow you. yourself to be misled. 18th April. They did the press conference. They didn't cite a source. They have been exposed. My brother came here. He mentioned the source. He has been exposed. He's shifting the goalposts. Don't how, allow how, yourself. How, how, how to be, don't allow yourself to no, be misled. Pass, Nobody, even, if you, 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 you said that this is telegraphy. I don't, I don't allow myself to be misled. <laughs> this is not telegraphy. <laughs> mm. So you have been you have been exposed. So again, don't follow this bait. No, 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 I don't. I am saying bait. to you that, and to our I don't our follow church. your bait nor his bait. So, I don't follow so anybody's drop, bait. drop, drop this uh, news file uh, uh, addendum. Okay. Why? Drop it. Why? Because, because it is not because true. you don't like it. Because it is not. What true. is your evidence that it's not? So true? it is not true. What is your oh, evidence that it's not honorable. true? What allow is your proof? Allow him to wrap because up. you say so. Allow him to wrap up. No, because you up. say it's not true, then it's true. So it. Allow him. Allow. Allow. No, what is his evidence that it's not true? Allow Pius to wrap up. Let him give us the evidence that it's not true. I'm giving you the date. I'm giving you the time. I'm giving you the program. You sit here and say it's not true. You and that's all. Can I, may I no, tell it? us why it's not okay, true. Okay, so allow him. Allow him then. Tell us why it's not true. Allow him, Sweeney. <laughs> no, you no, should Pius. tell us why allow it's not Pius. true. That's what they will go through. Because he's a prophet. Okay. So allow him. Please. Okay. They will take you on a, a roller coaster. No, okay. you think so. They don't have... They, I'm saying that it's a lie. It didn't happen. Why? Because they we are a prophet Because the letter commission says so. once we say okay. Because the letter commission says so. Okay. And you had the opportunity to say these things... Uh, only after you 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 went to graphic uh, gh some fake news website and then you I'm now saying that run because into, because we I say it's a lie if okay. i may, if I may. Wrapping up our time is if out, I may. yes sir now honorable says that oh there's coincidence of thought is before there? the 2016 and so that means that the the electoral commission is working in concert with uh, with the government for your record for the records for your information we don't need a new uh, register to beat you. With the old register, we beat Mr. Mohammed. So let's go for it. But, 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 so, so but the majority leader in parliament says, me, when, when you had, hold on, the majority leader, I remember that when yes. you had the, the fair at the trade fair, fair mm. I was there to cover with my colleagues. <laughs> and he says that uh, the, the, he spoke to a new register, I forgot the exact statement, but he says, a Once new it register is compiled, must come. We cannot win I'm an saying that again the, in this for the rest, it, it is a fact in 2016. We use the old register, the okay. register that today is way out of way, way out of order. Mm. We cannot rely on it. There are technical people who have spoken. Yeah. This, my, my brother here speaks about all the experts. They make blanket statements. It's not true that all the experts have spoken on it. One or two individuals have, may have uh, opined on this matter. That doesn't mean that all experts have spoken. Imani, but if you, uh, Imani is not an expert in elections. They are not. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying if you say all experts have spoken, that's factually incorrect. I've heard uh, uh, IT engineers mm. speak to the integrity of the system that we have today and say that's not, it's not fit for purpose. Okay. But the only point is that, but the point is that, but the point is that, he makes the point that, oh, there is coincidence of thought. There's coincidence yes, of thought. So they are, uh, the AC and the government is working in concert and all that. After having established that we will beat them anyways, any day. Okay. I make the point to him that before the 2016, 2016 election, when Madame Charlotte, uh, Charlotte said, mm. didn't want to uh, compile a new register, when the MPP wanted, and then this is, want, didn't also want a, a, a new register, was that a coincidence of thought? Does that mean that at the time, the NDC and the Electoral Commission were acting in concert? Please, let's be principled, okay? okay? And at least the MPP has remained consistent on the fact that we need a new register. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm grateful so for your time. so we appointed someone to do it for I'm you. grateful for your time this uh, morning. Honorable Al Hassan <laughs> Suhini is a member of parliament for the Tamale North constituency. He was here on the ticket of the NDC. And also the Honorable Pius Enam Hajde is the Deputy Minister for uh, Information of the Republic of Ghana. And um, this is to, to endorse. And yeah. Yesterday, just one quick one. Right, I need right. you to do this for me. Okay. The whole of yesterday, I've been inundated with calls that have attacked you or attempted to attack you. I beg of you, please set the record straight so that the persons who keep calling me, they can rest. And let's assure the people that there's no problem between Pius and any member of the media and that we are friends. We may disagree mm. on the set. We may, uh, be even, we may say the things in the strongest of terms, but that I never attacked you or attempted to attack you. Please, I will. Okay. I, will. I, I thought you were going to... Very First well of all, ap apologize to us for calling us unprofessional. No, 
unprofessional. <laughs> Those biased, are people like that. Just admit it. Unprofessional. Just admit it. Unprofessional, biased, <laughs> and irresponsible. I thought you were going yesterday, to do that first. And then, and then I would, I would come in. Be a gentleman. Yesterday, allow, yes. allow him, please. yesterday, it was my view that uh, you did not moderate the program well. Not okay. TV3. Okay. And not every day. Yesterday. I'm a today, reflection of my today, station. Today, uh, you have upped your game. You have you have improved, and I can commend you. <laughs> but yesterday was a bad day. But that's not an apology, is it? No, but uh, okay. <laughs> Johnny, uh, I thought anyway, you were we going are, to apologize so that no, I, I, can, just wanted, I can reciprocate no, I just wanted, it. And I, I just can reciprocate wanted, it. No, no, I just wanted. No, but this one, I can. It's a, something that happened. We can discuss it. I can apologize if I bruised your ego and all that. I can do that. But the factual misrepresentation that I is will, there, but I'm saying okay. that you're asking me. So yesterday, just if I if I if I overheated, if my steam my engine got overheated and I said things you didn't you didn't like, it's fine, it's fine. What let is it fine? pass. Let it pass. <laughs> you should let it In, pass. Uh, but you are not sorry. But, but, but you should let it pass. But you are not sorry. <laughs> oh, why is it difficult? Why is it difficult to be a gentleman? <laughs> I am. Jody knows I'm a gentleman. Yes, yeah, so demonstrate it publicly. Yesterday. Yesterday, yes. After all was said and done, I drove back to to the office to to speak with him. Yes. So I am a gentleman. So you are okay? sorry. Okay. So, so there's nothing to be sorry about because we can disagree. But I'm saying that there's everything wrong about people who were not here telling lies about what didn't happen and soiling both my name and Johnny's name. That one is factually incorrect. But as for disagreements, we can have it. Okay. And and <laughs> say <Dobia. laughs> Okay. So uh, on that uh, on that conditional morning. apology note. <laughs> was that even an apology? Is, is, that, is that if if I've done so? I thought he was here for remedial so, classes, but so, it looks like he has failed that so, one. So, <laughs> so let he me has the let me st let me state that um, well we accept the conditional apology <laughs> and <laughs> except to say that we we are firm in our resolve <laughs> we are unbiased <laughs> we are principled we are responsible and um, we were we are very professional but just to also put on record that yesterday there was no physical attack um, i've i've read you, you know in many different forms that there was a physical attack what actually happened was that uh, what you saw on air, and some have called it verbal attack or assault on me, and <laughs> which Pius has apologized. But after the program, has he? Well, conditionally apologized. Johnny, after the, Johnny, but, Johnny, I, Johnny. I, I, can I finish my statement? Yeah, he has only really justified. After, after the program, um, you know, we're, we're leaving here, and um, tempers were still high at the time. I was and, not happy. I was not happy. Uh, Pius wasn't happy, no, so no, no. Uh, he pointed a finger at me. Well, sp spoke uh, on top of his voice, and, <laughs> and well, but that's that's all it was. That's all it was. And honourable Kwame Abuja, I mean, we later at five p.m. Uh, we were here. We had a conversation, a hearty conversation, like brothers. <laughs> so we are gentlemen. We don't fight. And uh, if we want to fight, we would have joined Buko Bank. And I'm just here to file my complaint. Yes, power. but just I'm to just, place on record that at Media General and as an individual, I'm, I'm unbiased, <laughs> I'm professional, and I'm responsible. Thank you. Hey, Paris. Johnny. Uh, thank no, you fine. very much. Thank for you coming. for having me. Thank you for having so, me. Somebody Johnny. says you're not, doing, any, you're not doing politics, but you're one my Lydia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my, my MP for uh, I also West Wagon. She's okay. produced 50,000 of this and distributed. Wow. I'm a constituent, so I also got one. Okay. And so I'm wearing it. You didn't bring some for. No, no, no I'll, ask her. I'll, I'll, I'll ask her. I'll ask her. Okay. Some.